With over 50 years of judo experience and dedication, Mr. Johannes Daxbar will be the first one to say that judo is more than a sport. For many, it's a way of life, inside and outside the dojo. So my idea and my convincement was always based by my deep feelings that judo is worthwhile to be learned all over the world. So I'm 100% uh, a judoka. Welcome to the Combat Sports in Africa podcast. This podcast is about combat sports development on the continent of Africa. Africa is not a country, it's a continent made up of over 50 countries. And we're going to highlight the many coaches, athletes, academics, sports journalists, and the local to international supporters of amateur and professional combat sports across the continent of Africa. In our second episode, we'll be speaking to Mr. Johannes Daxbar. He's an international supporter of judo development in Ethiopia and worldwide. In 2019, him and his wife, Regina, were both awarded the One World Medal in Germany for their dedicated work in applying the combat sport and art of judo as a social development tool in Ethiopia. Now, Mr. Daxbar is a police commissioner in the Bavarian Police, that's in Germany. He's been actively involved in all aspects of judo as a former competitor, coach, club president, and in addition to having worked with various judo-related sporting organizations at the local, state, and federal level, as well as the International Judo Federation, the IJF, as an active member of the IJF Military and Police Commission. Please note, this interview was conducted in late September 2021. I previously interviewed Mr. Duxbar for a documentary on the sports development of judo in Ethiopia, which I'm still working on. Okay, let's get to the interview. Mr. Johannes Daxbar, how are you doing? So I'm, I'm fine, Mr. Garami. Thanks that we have the possibility to meet. And uh, a long time has gone since our last personal meeting, but I enjoy every encounter with you. Hope you are doing well. I'm doing well. I'm really looking forward to this uh, interview here with you, sir. First question I, I'd like to ask you, can you give us a summary of your judo career from your days as a competitor to a coach and your overall involvement in, in the sport of judo? Yeah, well, for sure. So, Mr. Garmi, so I started almost 50 years ago with judo and had very soon three huge dreams. So one of them was to go to Japan, the cradle of judo. The next one was to fight in the German national team as well as to fight in the first German national league. And uh, in the age of 25 years, I could realize all of these three dreams and had really great feeling and emotion to re realize with my own energy, with my own will, power, all of these three aims. So this is what judo is all about. You go on your way with huge dedication, patience, perseverance, and uh, the main judo title or my personal philosophy, never give up. Please let me express my thanks and gratitude to all of my coaches and partners. Without the great support of all of them and most of all of my parents, I would not be able to learn judo. And uh, uh, as well as the powerful judo structure in Germany is very important to give all the frame conditions. We have to, we have, um, uh, um, it, it's important to, to learn judo. The Bavarian Ministry for International Affairs, especially the Bavarian Police, supported me in my time as competitor with the special program Top Sports Support. You know, I'm police commissioner since 1979 when I started uh, in the Bavarian Police. Uh, in the age of 19 years, I founded the division Judo inside the Police Sports Club Königsbrunn in Bavaria, and I'm a Judo president for almost 40 years. Next year, we will have the 40 years anniversary. During my time as competitor, I had some success on the tatami. And after finishing competing, I studied in Cologne for the judo diploma coach, the highest diploma in Germany. I'm involved in Bavarian and German Police Sports Federation uh, in the part of judo and self-defense for around about 30 years to organize in the field of judo for police forces. And my expertise is as well requested in the European Police Sports Union. After finishing my time as competitor, I was the responsible person in Bavarian and German Judo Federation for examination and teaching. With the beginning Judo for Ethiopians in 2010, 
I was requested from the president of the World Judo Federation, Mr. Wieser, to be a member of the military and police commission. And uh, now I'm engaged in different parts of the global judo, like judo for peace, the gender equity, uh, judo for veterans, or for Africa. As you have heard, so my life is turning around judo, and I have had experienced so many great feelings and encounters with and by judo. My wife, Regina, we are married more than 30 years, is a judoka herself. I graduated in the former Italian successful competitor. Together with Regina, we could manage many regional, national, and international judo events and teaching lots of students. Some highlights together with my wife were several youth exchanges for our judo students with and in Japan and Italy, teaching together judo in Ethiopia several times, making a film uh, for the International Judo uh, Federation Academy um, with uh, the title Judo for Police and many, many others. So that's a, yeah, a long judo life in short. Thanks for your interest. Yes, that is a long judo life and it's fascinating because it en encompasses all aspects of, of your life. It sounds like it professionally and personally and you've really dedicated yourself uh, as a professional to, to this way of life. Next question for you, I'd like to know, how did you get involved in martial arts uh, sports development uh, in the country of Ethiopia? How did that happen? Ah, yeah, it happened, uh, I think, in the year in uh, 2008, when Dr. Zegai Degine, an uh, easier German from Berlin, asked me to teach judo in Ethiopia, which I did first time in 2010. So it was really amazing to be requested. And uh, so I, yeah, immediately I said, okay, Dr. Zegai, uh, I will do it. Uh, at that time, there was no judo activity in whole Ethiopia. Uh, Ethiopia currently has around about 110 million people. It's really a huge African country, I think, after Nigeria. It's the second huge uh, country in, on, on the African continent. Yeah, after my first trip to Ethiopia in 2010, Ethiopians and uh, Ethiopian politicians gave me a very positive feedback and I was requested to develop judo in Ethiopia. So, and I decided helping to build up a national judo structure and really an incredible long and colorful story began. For sure. And uh, what did you initially, what did you think of that uh, initiative? Uh, you know, this idea of, of judo for, in, in Ethiopia, what, did, what were your goals and objectives uh, at that time? Yeah, so uh, you, you have uh, seen, uh, I'm 100% convinced about judo. And uh, I have seen in Ethiopia, there is no judo structure. There was no judo. And so I uh, received the feeling of Ethiopians, please let us try to, to, to establish judo. And so my personal motivation to bring in my knowledge, expertise, my time, energy, lots of expenses uh, covered by myself was Really, judo is worthwhile to be distributed all over the world. And uh, it's important for the development of a citizenship into a just society with the judo values. And we call it the global judo values like respect or friendship or the gender equity or peace. And that's really amazing to, to try to, to offer it and to see on the other hand, people are very happy to see a new life or to see new opportunities. Uh, you know, judo is an Olympic sport, but as well, like the founder of judo, uh, the Japanese professor Chikoro Kano explained, judo is more than a sport and it helps the society, see human beings for a better life together. And uh, that's what we have um, um, to try to come together. People all over the world, not even in Africa, as well as in Germany or in Russia or in other parts of the world. Human beings are, we are human beings and we have to try to, to work together, to come together, to uh, try to, to solve conflicts for a better peaceful life. I'm 100% I'm convinced about the benefits of judo for the human mankind. And at that time there was no judo in Ethiopia. So that were my first thoughts and, and are as well as my current thoughts. 
So it's highly important to establish a judo structure in the form of a proper organization, um, a proper federation or association. As I, I um, uh, said already during my introduction, without a, a good judo structure in Bavaria or in Germany, I would be not able to learn judo. And the same is uh, uh, we have to try in Ethiopia. It's, it's fascinating because I think with, with a sport, uh, with a standardized global sport like, like judo, you see that the, the importance of a system, an organized model, uh, and so on, as you mentioned, the structure. Now, I'm going to jump to a question here about characteristics. What are key characteristics do you think a judo community must have to produce high-performing judo competitors? Yeah, there are some really crucial frame conditions for high-performing judo. I will reduce it only like a tripod. So one like is the human resource and uh, respective uh, the talented young people. And uh, so in Ethiopia, we have so many huge potential, which is amazing. Uh, but to have only talents for fighting is not enough. So there's a second leg on this tripod, and this is to have qualified and trustable coaches. And uh, that was my, uh, my intention. Uh, to, to start in Ethiopia, and which I tried to build up teaching coaches. And after 11 years, we had really some good success, some good coaches. And uh, qualification or expertise, well educated coaches, coaches in judo skills, but we have to teach them as well in a social way. The judo values, it's so highly important to teach judo as a way of life. Uh, the third leg, is as well as important, and this is a strong and reliable administration, which I have not positive in my memory. That's a really a huge lack in Ethiopia, and not only in the uh, part or in the field of sport. So, so many uh, supporters or uh, um, helping persons or um, uh, NGOs, non government organizations, they suffered with sometimes really a lousy, sorry for this. Uh, this word with a lousy administration. To establish a national judo and jiu-jitsu structure or federation in Ethiopia is really a nightmare. Thousands of different rules, no interest in the working sector or the executive sector in the offices, despite the huge wish and support from the high politics. So uh, frustration and disappointment sometimes try to overpower me and all of our supporters. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, uh, many other NGOs had suffered the same like I did, and they gave up. It's always a huge damage for Ethiopia, and uh, uh, damage for Ethiopian people as the future of Ethiopian children. And for me, it's unbelievable. Uh, as well as uh, sometimes it's, uh, I'm so sad about uh, acting uh, with really ungrateful manners, really frustrate as well as wonderful people from all over the world, say, um, say, say they're hardly speaking for Ethiopia or they have dedicated for Ethiopia, as well as Ethiopians, they try to, to improve uh, the situation in, in, in their country. And unfortunately, in, in my experience, Ethiopia missed a clear support from the administration to bring the necessary frame conditions. And that's really, uh, uh, un un unlucky situation and I'm in good hope if they will change it so we will have uh, very soon a uh, huge and positive uh, success. Now as far as like the, the current state of judo in, in, in that country what's your opinion on, on the state of judo uh, in, oh, in well. Ethiopia? Yeah well Mr. Gami uh, we have good and really qualified Judoka and judo coaches, some with black belt and international level. So said so we can compare it and I'm very happy about it. So the Ethiopians showed a huge dedication and they trained hard and, and uh, continuously. And uh, yeah, so uh, there's a, a huge development. And as well as there's a huge interest in judo, but as I mentioned before, the, the, 
uh, lack on the on, on, on the great support in in the administration. Uh, this necessary this um, uh, basic frame condition they are really high complicated, and I think uh, that's the the point we have to work out. And I received as well as Dr. Dr. Zegai, we received both uh, from the high political level huge support. But uh, sometimes uh, I think the support from the high political level have to come down to the executive level. I think that's, that's important. Now, it's interesting hearing your, your professional opinion from, from your own experience in regards to, to the work you've done in, in, in Ethiopia. But can you tell us, in addition to having, having coached judo players in Ethiopia, where else um, in the world has judo sent you for teaching and furthering the sport. Yeah, <laughs> no, well, so judo is uh, a fantastic sport and is really able to overcome all kinds of different obstacles and borders. And uh, that's why uh, we call as well uh, about a judo family, a global judo family. And I'm so happy that uh, Ethiopia is a part of the uh, world judo family since 2011 when um, the world judo president, Mr. Wieser, uh, invited two Ethiopians to come to Paris. And that was really, really great. So for my person, I was in many countries and was always welcomed with great pleasure and hosted as friend. I experienced this all over Europe, in Japan, in Korea, in Russia, in India, in Sudan, in uh, Arabic countries. And in all of these countries, I felt more than 100% welcomed and had not to suffer with, unfortunately, some offenses or hostility, which happened uh, several times in Ethiopia. So it's sometimes really, really crazy. Uh, we will bring uh, uh, development, we will give them our friendship and so on. And people in, in sport administration uh, offices and so on, they, they did not say hello to me. And, and that is what, what is sometimes really hurting. So I'm wondering that all over the world, uh, my and, and our engagement for free to help developing judo was appreciated and supported with great interest and dedication. Yeah. But it not always happened in Ethiopia. <laughs> Despite some great people, some great Ethiopians people, they tried to, to help, they do all the best. But in the end of the day, I have the experience that people in executing positions didn't understand that my or our engagement to the face Europeans was a present, was a present, was a donation with qualification and education. And expertise and qualification will give you, will give you bread, will give you existence for your future. And, and if I will, uh, present some some person 50 euro so maybe tomorrow after tomorrow 50 euro for 50 dollars are spoiled they are out but uh, if um, i'm able to to give education qualification uh, expertise uh, capability to a person he can work with it and uh, for example if a person can play a music instrument so it's really great he can he can work it out and he can play music or he can sing or he can write um, a book or he can teach judo five, 10, 20 years, 30 years, the all, the all life long. And that was my um, idea. So, uh, but I feel that this is important of my personal uh, development philosophy was not always uh, understood. But we have to work out, and maybe with my, my podcast interview, maybe some of, 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 of the persons uh, will understand it. So um, I have to mention that I, had, I have had never the idea to make business. I did it all for free. Right. And, and, and this is uh, one point in our, in our truth of philosophy. So we call it uh, Senpai Kohai. The elder one will uh, help the, the younger one. The more experienced person will help the less experienced person. The black belt had, had, uh, has to, uh, has to uh, develop, has to support uh, the green belt. 
and so on. So the, the beginner will be supported by the runaway and so on. And, and, and that's really a, a huge, a huge philosophy and it's working all over the world. And I hope um, with, uh, with common support, with a great network, we will be able once a day uh, to implement it in, in Ethiopia. I have a follow-up question, but I'm going to frame it by, for first by, by saying, uh, obviously, you, you know, you've given uh, 50 years of your life uh, to, to the sport of judo. Uh, I've seen you in action. You're a very committed, driven uh, professional, and very organized, quite frankly. So it's, it's, it's a huge asset for any uh, organization to have you on board as, as a judo coach and supporter and so on. And I understand from your honest answers here in regards to your experience in Ethiopia, let's face it, it's been very, very challenging and you, you've been very open about it. And I think people can appreciate and, and, and hear the honesty um, in your voice. I know there's been some, some uh, you know, some negative experiences, but overall, I suppose there could have been some, some positive ones. My question for you, uh, as I'm setting this up here, is what do these experiences, these interesting experiences, mean to you personally and professionally? Because you've been all over the world doing uh, spreading judo in, 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 you know, in every continent. Uh, and what do all these experiences mean to you and also to, to your wife, Regina, because you guys are, are a team? Yeah, uh, Mr. Gami, I will um, uh, name it only in one short sentence. So it shows that we Chudaka all over the world are really a special kind of family, the Chudo family. And uh, that's what is what is uh, carrying me all over the world uh, together with my wife, together with our friends. So we are meeting, we are uh, playing Chudo together, we are teaching, we are exchanging our experiences. Uh, judo is uh, is combining the people, is connecting the people uh, between all colors, between all borders, between all uh, religion um, um, structures of left or right or white and black or young and old, uh, with passport in green or with passport in red, and and and, and that's really great. And so I'm I'm grateful to be a part of this global judo family. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm joining you from, from Canada. You live in, in Germany, and we're speaking about Ethiopia. And I think it's, an important, uh, it's important to understand a bit more about uh, the, the German sports community, particularly when it comes to, to competitive judo. Uh, we know that Germany is very strong uh, in various sports, particularly judo. If anyone watches inter IGF uh, international judo you see plenty of germans competing uh, out there men and women incredible talent and, and coaching staff and so on now can you give us an overview on how competitive judo is managed and organized in germany yeah well so uh, i think uh, we have uh, a couple of points um, to, to mention so one is um, for sure germany is a well-developed country and the daily daily fighting for surviving cannot be compared with Africa or Ethiopia. That's a fact. So we have more time to, to develop uh, for, for hobbies like sport. In other countries, they have to, to, to work to, to try to survive um, today or tomorrow. Uh, the German administration, as I mentioned before, is capable and reliable. We don't know any arbitrariness in the administration, and if there's a kind of suspect, the citizen can make objections and can go to the next upper level. And it's, it's working, it's working well. Uh, the next one, the, the state or the government or the administration tries to help the sports federations and not to fight or to work against. They are trying to support the sports club or the, the sports people and not to, to give him some obstacles. Uh, so their interest is uh, to uh, organize all the frame conditions so that they can play their kind of sport, even soccer or swimming or judo or athletics. And they try to help because in, in, in Germany, uh, our government, our, our uh, uh, people, uh, they have understood that it's important to have 
quite good rules to support that people can develop. And if they can, um, can meet for sport, if they can do this and that, there are some, some benefits. It's first of all, a part for a social piece. It's as well as a part for healthy. So, and, and if people have something to do, uh, so, so they are more and more peaceful. In Ethiopia, says in, in, in some of this point, mostly contrary, as I have experienced in, in, in 10 years, if this system doesn't change, uh, so it's hard to say, I think Ethiopia will never have a chance to develop. Now, in, in, in that sort of situation there with, with the chance to develop, if there are any key transferable best practices that uh, you could pull from the German model, uh, what would they be and could they be applied to a country like, like Ethiopia? Are there any best practices that could be used in, uh, in that country for judo development? Yeah, for sure. So uh, Dr. Zegai and my person, we offer really so many knowledge and experience, uh, by the way, as well as materials for free to Ethiopia. And uh, Dr. Zegai and my person, we, we uh, had lots of personal meetings with uh, sport officials in Ethiopia, and, but uh, we, we couldn't come through. So we were asked about uh, how is it working in Germany with the German Olympic Sports Confederation. And we, we, we did it and we tried it, but uh, uh, as uh, already um, several times uh, mentioned, uh, the, the system in, in the sport um, administration is not working well. So we need qualified persons in, in the administrations. So it's crucial and they have uh, to bring a fair and open treatment and uh, away with arrogance and proudness. Uh, Ethiopia should focus on education and human skills, but um, um, otherwise people like Dr. Tsukai and my person, once a day we say, okay, we are out because we are frustrated. And, and uh, Ethiopia has a huge potential so I have many, many nice people and I, I encountered so great people and I'm, I'm still in contact with lots of them and I'm looking forward to come uh, this year again to, to go this year again to Ethiopia to meet them. But on the other hand, uh, I'm investing time and my lifetime and energy and as well as um, some, some uh, own money uh, and, and, and there is sometimes coming nothing in return. And, and, and that's, that's uh, really, really a, a tough road. But uh, as I mentioned, I'm, uh, I try to, to, work, to work it out and I never give up. But that are some, some points I think Ethiopia uh, should take some good advice, uh, not only in the upper level, the next level, the second or third level, the working level, so I have to learn something from, from qualified persons. Yeah. So we're going to take a, a step back and look at the broader picture in regards to judo sports development. Uh, and the question is, is judo sports development in countries like Ethiopia and elsewhere, is, is that initiative, are those initiatives, I should say, important to the International Judo Federation? Uh, if so, tell us why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so the International Judo Federation, we have only one global Judo Federation, it's the IGF, uh, it's the global umbrella of all Judo activities. And the International Judo Federation is not only working for the Olympic Games or high performance sport. So maybe you have seen uh, some, uh, some footage from the last Olympics in Tokyo. It was really a great, great advertising for Judo huge performance, um, uh, best organized from our Japanese friends, really a, a masterpiece of, of a, 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 huge, a huge championship, the last Olympics. But IGF is doing uh, as well a lot of other projects as a benefit for the human beings. For example, we are doing the Judo for Peace and Development projects, Judo for Children, Judo for Women, and the gender part, it's high important, judo for police forces, 
to bring judo as um, a tool for a smarter conflict resolution for police forces to try to prevent police violence and so on to for, for a peaceful encounter between the citizens and the, the police judo for refugees so we uh, are bringing judo for a social development as well as judo is a part for for a smarter conflict solution so you see we 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 are trying to to distribute judo all over the world and we have a lot of of great persons in our uh, in our um, global federation uh, and we will give all people all over the world the chance to learn judo and this is our philosophy it's fascinating because it's one of the i think one of the only sports that really uh, pushes its values, uh, you know, what they believe in. Uh, and it's beyond just the sport, you know, it's, it's a way of life. And, and it, it goes to show when we have individuals that, like yourself uh, and, and your community, you know, who, who are former athletes, become coaches, and now are ambassadors of the sports, teaching in your community in, in, in Germany, but also looking at the broader judo community, uh, so it's a sport that's really driven by by values and ethics. And uh, as a combat sports fan, I think it, it's really remarkable um, and and important now more than ever in the state of of, of the world uh, to to have values and and, and ethics. I think uh, every sport needs that, and I think judo does. A, you know, in my opinion, from from what I've seen, as as, as you just described, does an excellent job in that. Now I'm going to move on to to talk specifically in regards to the topic of success and uh, how should one measure success when it comes to sports development uh, in Ethiopia? From your experience, how should one measure success? Yeah, one measure success, I think, is the sport administration has to improve to to build up uh, to secure the frame conditions. Uh, we have quite good um, and well-educated judo coaches. They need the support, they need the protection of uh, the administration, and then they can work. And uh, my person, as well as the international network, will, will support them. And it's more easier if the frame conditions, if, uh, if uh, left and right from the streets are a safe there's some safe ground, so we, we, we can drive it through at 100%. So uh, if, if the um, administration will do their part on the right way and uh, very, very soon, so we, we, we can do it. I'm 100% convinced. Right on. I have a two-part question here for you now. Can you tell us some of the major milestone and achievements you and your team have been able to achieve on and off the tatami and uh, from uh, Ethiopian athletes competing internationally and winning major, you know, major events, but also, uh, you know, that aspects of sport development winning. So if you can give us kind of a, uh, an overview of, of these major achievements. Yes. Yeah, so um, uh, during the last 11 years, we had a lot of activities and milestones and, and a lot of efforts so uh, we started in 2011. It was one year after um, I was first time in Ethiopia uh, with two Ethiopians during the World Championship in Paris. And this was really the first time it was historically that Ethiopia participated in a World Championship. And it was the first time Ethiopia uh, was invited to the global Judo Fem. It was really amazing. It was heart touching. In 2015, um, I could also organize uh, that uh, two Ethiopians participated uh, during the German Grand Prix in Düsseldorf in Germany. Uh, Mr. Gamani, you uh, yourself, you you was there and and took some footage, and we had uh, you you were um, a part of of this huge of this really great event. So the whole um, the whole um, event German Grand Prix was under the name of Judo for Ethiopians with material donations, with international press conference, 
as well as with uh, participation of um, politicians from the Ethiopian embassy. It was really a great, great thing. Uh, one milestone, uh, um, I was 10 times in Ethiopia as ambassador of the International Judo Federation, twice together with my wife, Regina, and she tried to work out the gender part. But we have given lots of seminars, lots of um, uh, examinations. Uh, I organized lots of materials like um, judo clothes, uh, and uh, tatami uh, judo mats and uh, with the support of the German foreign ministry, the German um, em embassy in, in Ethiopia, in Addis Abeba. So we could deliver really uh, materials as well as uh, uh, supported by, by the German judo federation and German judo clubs. So I said, okay, for our friends in Ethiopia, we do it with great pleasure. So uh, it was really a lot of, of activity, a lot of engagement uh, we could do. And uh, as well as it was great to work together with the Ethiopians. And we were together on the tatami and we sweated and we made a randori and we discussed and tried to develop. And so uh, it was always really heart touching. So uh, it, it shows that uh, our, our idea of a global judo family is working all over, all over the world. And especially now between um, our friends in Ethiopia. So it's really great. Now, if we were to look five years from now, where do you see the state of, uh, of judo and jiu-jitsu in Ethiopia? From, based on what you know, and, and you know, you've been doing this for 11 years in, in, the, in this country, where do you see it five years from now? Uh, so, so it depends on the political development. So we cannot have a look in the future, but uh, Ethiopia is suffering uh, with a lot of, of conflict with a lot of challenges. Um, one is uh, for sure the internal conflict with the region Tigray. We don't know what is happen happening. Uh, the second one is uh, the part with the chair, the great Ethiopian Renaissance dump, as well as uh, the population is um, uh, is increasing. We don't know what, what, what the weather will bring uh, during the next years. We don't know uh, how is the situ situation in the countries uh, surrounding Ethiopia. So I think... Uh, we, we, we cannot we cannot look in in, in, in the glass right but uh, I'm in a very good hope for for uh, a soon development for Judo and jiu-jitsu uh, but uh, as I mentioned it depends on the personal engagement of the people if if they are motivated enough to work the problems out uh, and uh, I'm sure we all are able for a positive change. And we can do it. And, and the world can be changed only by people. And you know, the, the trip around the world starts with the first step. And the first step starts in your mind. And so uh, we, we have uh, the, the steps started in the mind. We stepped already a certain, uh, certain uh, sum of, of miles. And yeah, we will never give up. We will do it. It's been many steps. It's been many, uh, it's been quite a journey, I should say. One last question for you. I really appreciate your, your time and all these great answers. And I'd like to know, as I said, it's been quite a journey for, for you, for, for, for many of your uh, you know, supporters and, and, and the community and so on. Uh, what inspires you to keep going and supporting uh, the development of judo in Ethiopia. I know you've kind of answered it before, but I want to ask again, because it seems like it's been quite the level of dedication, quite the level of focus and many challenges ahead, but you still keep going. So what inspires you to keep going? Oh, well, so my idea and my convincement was always based by my deep feelings that judo is worthwhile to be learned all over the world. So I'm 100% uh, a Chodoka, uh, as well as my wife. So uh, it's not so that I have to share it at home. 
So we together we have 200% uh, convincement about Judah. And uh, Judah was in 2010, one of the last countries without Judah and without the national Judah structure. So I felt, why not? Should we try to develop Judah in Ethiopia? And I have never seen it as a business and never expected a huge thank you very much. But I, uh, I did it and, and uh, I will do it for, for, the next, for the next time. In my, I have to thank uh, some, some people uh, to give my gratitude. Uh, I have met so many great and nice mm -hmm. Ethiopians I could meet in the last 11 years. And really every encounter with such persons was a huge enrichment for me, despite lots of attacks and backstabbing. And I look forward to see my Ethiopian friends as soon as possible. Before I will express my wishes for the future, I will try to give uh, my thanks for uh, the whole network. They supported me. They gave me sometimes uh, a, good, a good backup. They believed in, in me and in my, in my convincement, the German government, the international judo family, most of all, uh, the International Judo Federation with its president, Mr. Marius Wieser. Lots of Ethiopians, lots of my friends. And that was really great. So to, uh, yeah, to, to work together to discuss and up and down and no, oh, please don't give up. Okay, what do you need? You need uh, some, some kind of letter who, to whom it may concern. Oh yes, why not? Oh, you have a next address and I need some, some chudogi for Ethiopia. Okay, why not? I will, I will uh, try to help to cover some part of the transportation costs and this and that or in Ethiopia, I had always um, uh, open doors in the German embassy and that was really great, uh, as well as the Japanese ambassador invited me uh, twice. Uh, so uh, this, the, the whole network uh, is, is an approval that Judo is worthwhile to, to distribute it. Uh, not to forget the international Judo car, uh, they are working in Ethiopia for the African, uh, sorry, uh, for the European Union or for the United Nations or for other companies. And so I have a lot of, of huge friends met the whole world in, in Addis Abeba. And once we organized um, uh, a, a judo training um, with the Ethiopian sports minister, with um, representatives from the German embassy, as well as the Japanese ambassador. And I think we were 12 or 13 or 14 different countries on one tatami. And this was really, really great feeling. So mm -hmm. you see uh, the whole Judah family. Yeah, um, my wishes for Ethiopia and its people, they are coming really from the bottom of my heart and I wish Ethiopia and its population all the best for the future. Peace between the ethnic groups and uh, may God bless Ethiopia. Mr. Johannes Daxbar, thank you very much for your time and your commitment to, to spreading judo uh, everywhere, particularly in Ethiopia. I know it's been, uh, it's been quite a journey for you and your supporters, and uh, I hope you continue doing uh, your great work. And uh, thank you for this interview. Thanks. All the best for you, Mr. Gamami. You're listening to the Combat Sports in Africa podcast. I hope you enjoyed that interview. There's only a few weeks before 2021 comes to an end, but I'll be working on episode three, which will be available soon. Thank you for listening to the Combat Sports in Africa podcast.